Hello dear friends, today we will tell about the anti-tank rifle of the German army. According to German documents, this gun was a small arms weapon. But the main artillery directorate of the Red Army, as well as the military ministries of Great Britain and the United States, classified the SPZB-41 as an anti-tank gun. The reasons for such a different classification was that it had all signs of an artillery gun. Gun carriage, upper and lower carriage, protective shield, cradle with an anti-recoil mechanism, although the aiming was carried out manually, by moving the gunner's body and tilting the barrel up and down with special grips. The main difference between this gun and other anti-tank rifles and cannons was the tapered barrel, which had a bigger caliber at the breech face than at the muzzle. The development of the automatic anti-tank gun with tapered barrel began at the end of 1939 at the Mauser Company. Initially, the gun had an index MK8202. At the breech face, the gun had a caliber of 28 mm and at the muzzle 20 mm. It required specially designed projectiles consisting of tungsten carbide core, steel base and ballistic tip. The base had two annular locks, which were pressed into the rifling as the projectile moved in the chamber. This ensured that the pressure of the powder gases on the bottom of the projectile was used to the fullest extent possible, and accordingly a high muzzle velocity was achieved. However, during the design and testing phase, the MK8202 automatic gun was modified into the SPZB-41 single-shot heavy anti-tank rifle. And after the testing in June-July 1940, it was accepted by the Wehrmacht for service. The anti-tank rifle had a manually operated horizontal V-shaped action bolt, which fired 2015 rounds per minute, which is a pretty high rate of fire. The barrel was equipped with muzzle brake to reduce recoil energy. The SPZB-41 was mounted on a light-wheeled gun carriage with sliding gun frames. A two-man crew was needed for the operating of the gun, and they were protected by the double shield. No pivot or elevating mechanism was used for this anti-tank gun. It was its main characteristic. Aiming was realized by manually swinging the barrel on trunnions, while horizontal aiming was achieved by turning barrel with the help of two handles on the lower carriage. Later, a light version of the gun carriage was developed, which was used by parachute troops of Luftwaffe. It consisted of a single carriage with slides, on which small wheels could be mounted for moving in the field. It weighed 139 kg, while a conventional version weighed 223 kg. This gun had a very high muzzle velocity of the armor-piercing projectile, with a weight of 131 grams. To be exact, it was 1,402 meters per second. Due to this, if the angle was 30 degrees, armor penetration was at 100 meters 52 millimeters, at 300 meters 46 millimeters, at 500 meters 40 millimeters, and at 1,000 meters 25 millimeters. This was one of the best performances for this caliber. In 1941, a shrapnel shell with a weight of 85 grams was added to the ammunition, but its effectiveness was very low. One of the disadvantages was the high cost – 4,500 Reichsmarks. And also, the barrel was getting badly worn out. At first, its service life was only 250 rounds. Later, it was increased to 500. In addition, tungsten was used to produce the shells, which was extremely scarce. By early 1941, Germany had 483 tons of tungsten in stock. Of this amount, 87 tons were spent on the production of 7mm rounds with a tungsten core, 2 tons on various other needs, and the remaining 384 tons were spent on the production of subcaliber rounds. About 700,000 such shells for tank, anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns were produced altogether. Due to the depletion of tungsten stocks, the production of these rounds was stopped in November 1943. For the same reason, the production of SPZB-41 was stopped in September 1943. Altogether, 2,797 of SPZB-41 were produced, 
These anti-tank rifles were used mainly by Wehrmacht infantry divisions, airborne divisions and parachute divisions of Luftwaffe, and were used by them until the end of the war. The practice of mounting these guns in light armored vehicles with help of various improvised devices became widespread. There are a lot of photos where you can see that they were mounted in different modifications of armored vehicles. Last time in the Second World War this type of gun was used in street fighting in Berlin in 1945. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video then support it with a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you soon guys. Bye everyone.